Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. It's Saturday morning and we had a day completely covered in rain yesterday and Thursday night. And so we've had, after a day and a half of rain, it's time to walk around the garden and see what needs to be taken care of. It's a Saturday garden maintenance kind of day. So come along with me and let's see what needs to be done. Here I am out in my front yard and on quick inspection, I've already seen a lot of things that need to be taken care of. I know that today I'm going to be walking around with my pruners and a, um, a bucket to put my clippings into. It is deadheading day. Let's take a look. Starting over here on the right side and we'll just move across toward the left. Um, here we've got a penstemon that is just about done blooming so I'll go ahead and deadhead that. Actually someday I'm going to move that from that spot but maybe not today. There's the azalea we just moved recently. There's two different kinds of salvia here. This one's May night and I'm not sure what these two are. They're not the same though uh, but I've already deadheaded these two but the May night is time to be deadheaded on that one. Knockout Rose is looking okay, nothing to do there, but the yellow one, yes, definitely needs to be deadheaded, pruned up, just shaped up a little bit. Fairy Rose is blooming its head off and it got knocked down in the rain, so I'm going to go ahead and deadhead almost all those blooms as well and let it perk back up. This yellow Knockout Rose also needs a good haircut. Speaking of haircuts, these gold mop cypresses or false cypresses or whatever they are, I forget. Um, they really would benefit from taking a, a shearing. Uh, they look a little bit like Cousin It right now, uh, but I'm not sure that's happening today because that, that would be using a power tool and I'm not sure my batteries are charged. Okay, what else? Let's come around this way. This knockout rose does have some things that should be deadheaded, but there's also a lot of current blooms on it that are doing just fine. So we'll just be judicial on that one. The spirea though, it's time to take this back. There are still some active flowers going on, but mostly they're spent flowers. And so I'm just going to go ahead and today I'm just going to cut it back and it will flush out again and give us more blooms later this season. Okay. Looking over here. Yep. That rose needs some love and care today. And same with this spirea. It's going to get a haircut today. Moving along. Penstemon, they're done. They need a trim. Azalea, azalea, azalea way over there. They all have all these spent blooms on them. They don't really need a trim, but I might take some time and pull off uh, these ugly brown. I mean, it's not necessary to do that, but it makes it look a little nicer. So if I have extra time, maybe I'll do that. Oh, look, I've got some grapevine growing in there. Let me get that out of there. All right, uh, this is a beauty bush, beauty berry. And I might trim off a couple of those side branches just so they don't go so lateral. But this one's looking pretty good. Hypericum's looking good. It's got some flowers and some berries on it. Um, oh, I can't wait for those lilies. They'll be here in a few weeks. Let's see what's on this side. Here's a clematis that it just really, it died off again. I don't know if it got dried out or what, but half, more than half of this clematis has died off again this season. So... Very frustrated with that. I'm not sure what's wrong. Um, but as far as deadheading, I don't think there's anything to do there. Lamb's ear, definitely, yes, needs some care. I think these petunias are getting a little bit too leggy, so I'm going to probably trim them all back, give them all a haircut, and they'll flush out again with some new growth. On this side, lamb's ears, yes, definitely need some care. And I'll probably cut back this euphorbia now. Um, and... Uh, pull off those flower heads and let the plant continue to grow. Inside here, there's not too much deadheading that needs to be done, but a little bit. I think the coral bells, they're probably done. I could probably take those seed heads down. Um, I'll still be back here. It's just coming on, so it's not time for that yet. Here, these two salvias definitely can be deadheaded. On this side, I'm going to let these hellebores continue to go to seed. You can see some of the seed heads have opened, but I think, last I looked anyway, there were still some yet to ripen and open. So I'll take a look at it and I'll take off any flower heads that are done, but uh, I'll leave the ones that aren't quite done yet. Uh, nothing else to deadhead on this side, but there is down here. These petunias again, these are um, Vista bubblegum. They 
probably could use a shearing back and allow them to reflush a little bit thicker. The spirea, definitely time to cut that back. These astilbes are done, so they can be cut back. Hydrangea's going strong though, looking lovely. So lots of deadheading to do. Let me grab my clippers, grab a bucket and get to work. Deadheading my roses, especially knockout roses, which are bred to bloom over and over all season long. I like to um, wait until most of the flower cluster is done blooming, as all of these are, and then I pull it down. I look for a leaf node down, you know, a couple of leaf nodes down, and I trim it there and I take all of this off. And so what that does is it allows new growth to come from down there without letting the plant get just too, too huge. I really don't want the plant to grow very large. In fact, this particular plant, I'm gonna eventually be taking out of here. Now this has, um, this has flower cluster up here and then also over here off of this same node. So I'm gonna pull it down to the next one down. This knockout rose has holes all over it. I don't know what's doing that, but I bought some Captain Jack's dead bug and I'm gonna spray after the plants dry off from the rain and see if I can stop that from happening anymore. I've been looking for bugs in particular, try to see the bugs and I never am able to see them. So I don't know if it's caterpillars that come and go or, I don't know, what is that, do you know? I'd love for you to tell me if you know what that is, that brown marking there and then these holes. I don't, I don't see anything in there, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Or maybe they come at night and go away in the morning. I don't know. I don't really know much about roses actually. Now, um, some days when you're doing your video, uh, you make mistakes. And so I pruned and deadheaded all of the stuff over on the other side of the house and my camera was not rolling so that's why i'm showing you on this one oh, look way up there all right so i'm going to let this dry off and then i'm going to spray it with captain jack's dead bug and see if i can stop this whatever is causing these holes and this browning foliage i'll see if i can get it to stop these penstemon are done flowering, or just about, and they will not reflower. They, I can trim them back. They're not going to send out a second flush of growth. So what I like to do for these is take them down to the first set of pretty leaves, and then I cut them off so that the cut is right in that leaf node. If I cut it with the stem coming up like that, I'm just going to have an ugly stem looking like that all the rest of the season. So. I like to take it down right inside that leaf node so that I see as little bit of that cut as possible. I have tried to get this to reflush with blooms, but it doesn't ever do it for me. Now being careful with where you place your cuts like this, it takes longer than say the spirea where I just grab it and chop, but it looks nicer over the course of the season. So it's worth the time in my opinion. So here I have a gladiolus that I thought I took out, but apparently I missed it. And so I'm just going to let it go ahead and flower this season and then I'll pull it out at the end of the season. Hey, it's all of those. I spy a Maynite salvia over there that I need to go do some deadheading on, so I'm going to go do that. Uh, Vista bubblegum pink petunias are getting very leggy, so I'm going to take them back, give them a haircut, and let them flush out again. Much thicker from the center. We'll be missing some flowers for a few days, but 
they'll be better for it in the end. You need to be careful with this euphorbia because it has a white substance in its, it's a sap basically, see that milky white that's dripping out? That is irritant, an irritant to a lot of people's skin. Some people are highly allergic to it, other people not so much, but you gotta be careful, because you never know. It's all over my clippers now, so I'm gonna go rinse my clippers off. I want to mention this sad, sad rose. This is a Mary rose, David Austin rose, and it really does not like this location. It doesn't get enough sun, and so it is weak, and so it's being attacked, and it is getting smaller and smaller every year. So my plan for this is to dig it out of here, transplant it to more of a full sun location, and see if I can get it to work there, and then replace this with a hydrangea. I've got another mini Mavet hydrangea that I think will be a really nice place right here um, for that plant. So that's why I didn't do anything with this today. I'm going to take care of this in a different session. On these coral bells, I'm taking them down to about the same level as the rest of the body of the plant. Now on these, the stalks actually have leaves all the way up, but I'm not gonna keep these because it would just be straggly. So this is where the main canopy of the plant is, so that's where I'm taking the cut. This one, the leaves don't climb up as high as the other one, so I'm just going to reach down inside the plant and cut this flower stem with the dirt. Probably will eventually move these two spireas out of this area into a sunnier location. They're really thin in here, lots of dead branches. They're just not thriving here, so I'll give them a better place once I figure out where that is. On this spirea, I'm not incredibly particular about where I do the trimming. I just grab it and take it down to like kind of an even level around the tree. A little volunteer spirea over here. I'm gonna let that grow and see what it does. Okay, let's talk about these hellebores for a second. So these leaves that you see here are this year's growth. These came up in like January or February and uh, last year's leaves were trimmed away at that time. And then they put on these flowers and then the flowers set seed and you can see on this one for example the seeds have dried out and dropped and so this flower can be cut off. Here's an example of a flower whose seeds have not yet fallen off. They haven't dried out, they haven't opened up and fallen out, whereas this one has. You can see the difference. This one is totally brown and open, and this one is still green and closed. So I'm going to leave this one, but take off the brown one. And I'm going to take off all the brown flowers. Like here's one where most of it's done, but one of them is still on, so I'm going to let that stay. And here's one that is actually just now forming, that's odd. So I'm going to take off the spent flowers and leave any that still haven't gotten their seeds off yet. I'm also leaving all this foliage, and I'll cut this foliage back in January or February once I see the new foliage emerging. But these are evergreen throughout the winter, and it'll provide a little bit of interest during the winter when all of these pastas and ferns and everything else have gone dormant for the season. So we're going to leave the foliage, just take the flowers. Deadheading these uh, columbine plants. These are Biedermeyer mix columbine. There's a maroon one and a purple one. Uh, but I think I'm going to let them go to seed. You can, see, well, I mean, they have gone to seed, but I think I'm going to let the seeds dry and then I'm going to collect them. Um, like you can see here, this one is almost ready to collect. Let's see the tiny.
tiny black seeds inside there and they fall out when you turn them upside down. So um, I think I'm gonna let all of these dry and collect them like I did last year. These did germinate very, very well for me this year. So I'm gonna let these go. I'm not gonna deadhead them. Now, some things you're gonna deadhead because they will put out more flowers if you take the old flowers off. And that is for like roses, some of the flowering shrubs like this pyrrhea, um, and you know, some other, other plants as well. Um, but sometimes you're just deadheading to get rid of the old flowers and make the plant look a little bit nicer, like the penstemon that I deadheaded and like the astilbe. So there's lots of good reasons to take the old flowers off of your plants, um, but also there are reasons to leave old flowers on your plants and we're not quite into that season yet. But when it comes time for uh, like the echinacea, the purple cone flowers, I'm going to not deadhead those because um, the the birds love the seed heads um, during the fall and winter. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, put them down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, friends. I'll see you in the next video.